Divinity Original Sin 2 is in full swing, and one of the major issues players are having with the game is builds. What build do I use? What's a good build for a warrior? What about a ranger? Mage? Etc. Since the game is extremely difficult, this has come much more into focus than one would expect. In this build guide, we're going to cover one of my personal favorites, the Death Knight. Let's jump into this build and see just how it works. The Death Knight is a popular, well-known build around the community, and it uses a mix of warfare and necromancer skills. The reason necromancer synergizes well with melee characters is because most of its skills are resisted by physical armor and have a rather short range, making them less useful to rangers. Characters who utilize this skill line will also be able to heal themselves for a good amount of vitality quite regularly, which is great because you should be taking more damage as a melee character. When making a Death Knight build, you really only need to focus on a few attributes. First is Strength. Strength is what all your warfare skills will use if you use a sword, axe, or mace, and it will boost your damage with skills that use Strength by 5% for each point. Secondly, there is Constitution. Constitution is very important for a Death Knight because you want to get hit, but not die. This attribute will provide some leeway by increasing your max HP, allowing you to take hits and then heal through Necromancer skills and by dealing damage. I recommend splitting the distribution of these attributes in a roughly 1 to 1 ratio. You can also put a few points into memory as needed. Because you'll be focusing on strength and constitution, you'll be able to use any armor that has a strength requirement and any shield you wish if you decide to use one. This means that you'll have much more physical armor than magic armor, as strength armor is skewed heavily towards physical protection. This is perfectly acceptable for this build because it's harder to be CC'd by elemental effects than physical ones. You can also acquire gear like Amulet of the Deep that grants immunity to things like Stunned or Frozen, which is very useful. When it comes to weapons, you'll have to choose between a two-handed or one-handed and a shield. You will do roughly 50% more damage with a two-handed weapon, but you'll lose out on a lot of armor and you won't be able to capitalize on a few warfare skills like Deflective Barrier. I strongly suggest going with a one-handed and shield early on in the game when you have almost no gear, and then swapping over after you've geared up a bit and gotten a bit more comfortable with the build. One of the hardest parts about making a build in Divinity Original Sin 2 is getting your abilities distribution correct. It's easy to get spread too thin, and often people make the mistake of not spreading points around enough. The bonuses you gain from abilities in this game are somewhat different than the original, so it's easy to see why people can get confused. Let's take a look at what abilities and talents you need for a Death Knight build. For this build, you want to shoot for 10 points into Warfare and 2 in Necromancer. This will maximize the damage of your skills, both Warfare and Necromancer, as well as allow you to use the needed Necromancer skills for a Death Knight. You can, of course, add more points into Necromancer to increase your healing, but none past 2 are needed for the use of the necessary skills. If you're looking to increase your damage after maxing Warfare, I suggest adding points into either single-handed or two-handed, depending on which setup you went with. By doing these last, you also grant yourself time to figure out which setup you like before committing to one. It's also perfectly fine to have a point spent here and there in various other abilities in order to unlock other skills, like those mentioned later in this video. Just be sure that you only spend the absolute minimum to unlock said skills. As far as talents go, I'd recommend any of the following. Living Armor. This talent works amazing with this build because it triggers from every form of healing I have tested, and passive healing from Necromancer will trigger this. This means you'll constantly be replenishing magic armor just by using your skills and attacking. This should be your first or second pick. Picture of Health. This talent increases your vitality pool by 3% for each point in Warfare, which works perfectly with this build. This should be your first or second pick. Opportunist. Pretty much a must-have for anyone playing melee. It nearly doubles your damage output. The Pawn. This is a great talent for this build, as it gives you free movement every turn in order to attack. It does require one point in Scoundrel, not including your gear, in order to use, however. Leech. Heals you when standing in blood. Might be a bit overkill, but better than most talents for this build. What a rush. This talent will give you an extra AP when below 50% health. Since you'll have a rather large HP pool from Constitution, this could come in very handy. Comeback Kid. This essentially prevents you from dying once per encounter, which is really good to have while learning this build. I would recommend taking this talent early and then getting rid of it later on when you can respec if you find you aren't dying. 
Now that you've decided which talents and abilities you want, you'll need to identify just which skills work best for this kind of setup. Let's start with Necromancer first, since they should pretty much be the same no matter what other skill lines you use. Since builds evolve over the course of the game, I'm going to put the skills in order from earliest obtainable to latest, because you won't be able to get all of them right away. Bloodsucker. This is a great pickup early on, as it's a good cheap heal for 1 AP. Use after you've injured an enemy to get some quick vitality. Combine it with Raining Blood for best results. Mosquito Swarm. This skill scales with Intelligence, which isn't ideal. However, it does increase its damage from Warfare, and it will give you some damage at range and a decent heal to boot. Decaying Touch. This skill again scales off Intelligence, which isn't ideal. It isn't particularly useful early game, as most enemies don't heal anyway. Consider picking it up later on when the fights get tougher. Raining Blood. This is a great way to cover the battlefield and blood for you to use to heal, and also makes enemies bleed themselves. It requires one Hydrosophist though, so keep that in mind when you make a decision about this ability. Death Wish. This skill has great synergy because you want to take damage with this build so that you can heal from dealing damage. This will allow you to heal up faster when at lower health and is just really win-win. Shackles of Pain. This skill won't deal any damage when it's first cast, but only costs 1 AP and will help you deal damage as you get hit. Be sure to use it after you've taken down the target's physical armor, or it won't work. Living on the Edge. This skill will prevent you from dying for two turns, which will often buy you enough time to heal up through damage output. Use this when you think you might fall, or when you want to charge in and swing for the fences. Battle Stomp. A good source of AoE knockdown with only a slight reduction to damage, 10%, over a basic attack. Also clears non-cursed surfaces and clouds, which can help you get where you need to go without taking damage. Bouncing Shield. A must-have skill for Death Knights that use shields, as it will significantly increase your damage output. Getting a better shield is very noticeable when using this skill. Disregard this if you use a two-handed weapon. Whirlwind. A great skill that only gets better when surrounded by more enemies. Use this to soften other nearby enemies while still dealing damage to your primary target. Deals full damage, which is great. Blitz Attack. Probably the best gap closer you can have that isn't a scoundrel skill. Hits up to 3 targets for 70% of what you would deal with a normal attack. Try to save it if you can for when enemies are grouped. Deflective Barrier. Another excellent skill for would-be shield users. Not only does it grant physical armor, it reflects all projectile attacks back at casters for the duration. Again, disregard if you don't use a shield. Guardian Angel. Because your vitality will constantly be seesawing with this build, and taking damage isn't necessarily a bad thing to a Death Knight, this skill fits in nicely. Be sure to time it so it's properly used or you'll just get yourself killed. Overpower. Destroys all the target's physical armor and knocks them down. One of the best sore skills in the game. Chicken Claw. Turn target into a chicken for one turn. This skill is resisted by physical armor so it works well here. Chickens cannot attack or use skills, so it's a great way to remove an enemy from the fight for a while until you can kill it or another target. Tentacle Lash. This skill scales with strength, which fits well here. Besides dealing good damage, it also prevents the target from being able to attack for one turn. Be sure they have little or no physical armor before using. Forced Exchange. Since you'll be taking damage quite often with this build, this oh shit skill might save your character, as well as make a really tough target go down easy. It costs 2 source points, so you'll probably only get to use it once per fight. Fortify. Great way to recover physical armor, which you'll need a lot of. It also prevents you from being teleported, and you can use it on other teammates as well if needed. Yay for teamwork. Reactive Armor. A great AoE that deals damage in relation to your physical armor. This skill is so good that it was recently nerfed in a patch, but not badly enough for me not to suggest it. The Death Knight is a flexible build, so be sure to tweak it to meet your party's demands. If you're playing as the tank, you want to be sure that you have a shield and you may want to increase your constitution a bit more than suggested, especially if you are the only melee character in your party. If you're playing the melee DPS role, you want to make sure you have a two-hander, but I wouldn't lower constitution much, if at all. If you find you are dying too much, whichever role you are playing, up your constitution until you aren't. It's better to stay alive than die after all. This build also has some good synergy with the summoning skill line if you wish to play more of a hybrid character with a pet. 
You can drop a few points from Warfare early on and add them to Summoning to pick up Conjure Incarnate and either of the infusions for him. This will essentially drop you into the tank roll, however, since you'll be missing out on extra damage from Warfare. It's quite fun though, and later on in the game you can drop skills like Soulmate on your Incarnate and you two can tank together. Putting points into Summoning will also allow you to use the Raised Bloated Corpse and Raised Bone Whittle abilities effectively, although you cannot use them simultaneously. You can play a Death Knight using Scoundrel skills instead of Warfare, but it synergizes differently. You will most likely deal more damage, but you'll be less tanky, and Scoundrel doesn't increase the damage of Necromancer skills the way Warfare does. If you're going the Scoundrel route, make sure you only put the bare minimum into Scoundrel, 3 or so, and the rest into Warfare for this reason. You'll heal more in this setup because Scoundrel skills pierce armor quite frequently, and you should prioritize the gear on this character because they will need the best of what you can get to stay alive. Don't get Tentacle Lash if you go this route either, as it scales with strength. You can be an undead while playing the Death Knight, as the healing from Necromancer skills will still heal you, but I would advise against it if it's your first playthrough, as the game is hard enough as it is. If you do, however, decide to play as an undead, I recommend taking some Geomancer skills that cause poison, like Poison Dart and Poison Wave, in order to heal yourself as necessary. This will also allow you to slot Fortify and Reactive Armor, which are both great for this build. This build is particularly good for Lone Wolves because when there are less people to hit, you will be hit more often. When playing as a Lone Wolf in a duo or solo, be sure to take the Executioner talent instead of the Pawn as it will drastically increase your AP per encounter. Also, if you are duoing, make sure at least one of you has the summoning skill Soulmate as it will help keep you both alive. Lastly, even if you build the perfect Death Knight, it won't guarantee victory if the rest of your party isn't up to snuff. This build won't carry your whole team through, so be sure to research other builds for other roles and make sure each one is the very best they can be. I'll be posting more build guides soon, so be sure to check them out. Good luck sorcerers, Rivalon is counting on you.